delighted to welcome to the podcast and indeed the YouTube channel, whatever it might be. I don't know who knows whatever media things this comes nowadays. Ruth Valerio, who I've been working with on a book called Planet Protectors, which I should now hold up for those. Who... <laughs> Have you got yours as well? <laughs> yours so like... well matched. It is, isn't it? Yours is more orange than mine. Clearly the daylight here is too bright. Huh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and can I just say, I really like the back cover too, Paul. I don't know if you've really taken that in, but it's, it's nice. quite nicely done. It so is. I was looking at that the other day. <laughs> it's very nice. It's a lovely back cover and worth holding up as well. There you go. Yeah. Um, also, what I didn't realise, and this won't come across in either video or audio, it, but the feel of it as well. It does I, feel nice, doesn't it? I was expecting, I mean, most books nowadays have that kind of glossy thing. But it feels more like more on topic of what we're talking about. It yeah, I no, it's. I agree. I, that's what I thought when I opened up the parcel. I thought, oh, that feels nice. Yes, it, it feels like it's the right sort of. I have no idea if that's the sort of material they should be using, but it feels like they've got. Oh, they will. I think we checked beforehand that, that it was definitely going to be on good paper. Yeah, good it is. That's really happy paper. <laughs> so, uh, so where did this come from? I mean, I, I know the answers to these questions because I've worked on this book with you, um, but. Uh, what happened then last summer you had a thought and what was that thought and how has it ended up here yeah so i wrote a book maybe i can hold that up too yes. i wrote a book a little while ago called l is for lifestyle that's I've for grown up mine's in the other room i would hold it up but it's two rooms away so i won't hold it. <laughs> but kind of it goes through the alphabet and takes an issue for each letter and it's very practical with some biblical bits in it and so on and it's been it's described as a bestseller so it's gone quite well and people have often said to me oh yeah, that would make a great kids book you want to do a children's version and I've it's just never really happened and then during the first lockdown it came back to me and I thought oh why, why come on why don't I just do it so then I thought because I'm not a children's writer so I thought I, I hate to tell you, but you now are that's, <laughs> that's true that's true I wasn't a children's writer <laughs> but I thought I need someone brilliant and funny who can help me with it and so of course who came to mind but your good self so I dropped you a note and said would you like to work with me on a children's book and said Paul do you know anybody who could do this <laughs> I did not I said you are brilliant and funny work with me and it, well we did and that was great uh, it was a marvellous thing. Um, we should actually probably do some more backstory for those who aren't familiar with your your oeuvre. Is that the word? It sounds sounds fancy. Um, <laughs> but your what's your backstory then? Is it's uh, I, I think if you're a speaker, but writer, but uh, theologian, uh, but environmentalist, but uh, campaigner, I mean, act, uh, who knows? I don't know all of those things. I don't know. Yes. Did, where, where did it begin? <laughs> and how does it end? <laughs> it's a weird question. Yeah. So for many years now, I've been writing and speaking on issues of justice, global justice, poverty issues, and wider environmental things. So caring for the whole of God's creation and trying to live those things out in my own life as well. So I uh, have done that in a range of different ways. Before the role that I'm currently in, I was with Arosha, UK and I pioneered the eco church scheme which uh, nearly up to 4,000 churches I was hearing the other day are now doing eco church and many dioceses and, and others as well which is super encouraging and I'm now with Tear Fund and I'm a director there so I oversee a group doing a whole range of different things but my passion is getting the church engaged around these issues of whole creation care, environmental care, and taking really seriously the biblical call to justice and to, as Isaiah says, spending ourselves on behalf of the hungry and satisfying the needs of the oppressed. Very so that's kind of my background. Very good, very good. It's, and, I, well, and before we get onto the, the book itself properly, um, how, how it, I don't want to sound too critical, but at the same time, I can imagine that that in trying to engage the church at large with being becoming eco churches and things like that, that some churches may be resistant or reluctant, or I don't know, but it's, it's odd to think why that might be, but mm -hmm. it's not something you often think of as, you know, when you hear a church sermon it, or a talk or an initiative that a church is doing, um, some churches are eco churches, but many are not. Is that fair to say? 
Yeah, yeah, and that's crazy, isn't it? Because the fundamental thing we believe in is that God is creator. It's the first statement in our Bibles. Well, so even there early on, isn't it? it's there. <laughs> yeah, it's on page one. You can't really miss it. And if you're from an Anglican church, which I'm not, but if you are, then you probably state that every Sunday. So we believe that God is the creator of the heavens and the earth. God made this world. So really, for us as Christians, it should be the most obvious thing. And, and in case we think, oh, that's just an Old Testament thing, we also see it really clearly in Paul's words in Colossians that Jesus' blood was shed on the cross to reconcile all things to God. So not only human beings, though I think absolutely a part of the good news is that people are, can be reconciled to God, but it's not only people, it's all things. So this should be just second nature for us as followers of the Lord of creation. Second nature. I like, I like what you did there. Second nature. It, it's, it's, <laughs> very good there you go. That's the next book uh, it's um so but it is something that so clearly then it's something that christians and churches should be part of but those people it seems today i mean i'm thinking of almost the, one of the oldest one of the young you know your greta thunberg and your david attenborough are two ex different extremes yeah. of life potentially yeah. um are mm. kind of i don't know it sort of seems like they are i don't want to say preaching because that does give a wrong connotation perhaps but they are kind of leaders of today almost prophets one mm. could say in a secular way looking ahead saying this is how things could be but neither from a religious background particularly but engaging young people it would seem uh and uh, and hopefully many adults but it seems that young people particularly maybe are joining this whole movement that's getting behind this yeah. in a different way yeah and uh, it's brilliant seeing them doing that so so encouraging and uh, and i'm so grateful both that David Attenborough is now speaking out so clearly and for Greta Thunberg and all that she is saying. I'm also really sad that we weren't leading the way as churches and that this isn't, you know, this should be something that we were known for decades ago. And uh, I think partly part of what was in your earlier question, I've been speaking on these things for probably more than 25 years now. And when I, for a lot of that time, it really hasn't been understood and I've been laughed at and <laughs> people taking the mickey out of me. And, you know, I felt, uh, felt a bit of a lone voice until I met up, I've, I do need to say with Arosha, folks from Arosha who helped me realize I'm not a lone voice. But for quite a bit of that time, I've just felt like I've been pushing water uphill thankfully that isn't the case anymore and over recent years in our churches we've been really changing and really coming to understand that we've got to be engaging with the climate crisis we've got to be engaging with species loss with plastic waste and so on not just because this is an interest in the secular world but because it is part of our christian faith yeah, it, it, I mean, fair play to you. Applause for the fact you have you've stuck to your guns, certainly. And, you know, I, many people might have, because I remember I've seen you speak, at, I think, Spring Harvest, I don't know, 10 years ago, who knows when, I don't know, maybe longer, mm -hmm. uh, about these issues. And and it, in a way that the world wasn't really talking about it much then, or nearly as much as it should be. I don't know if they're talking as much now mm -hmm. as they should be, but maybe it's slightly more on the agenda than it was. Uh, is it, I mean, is, what's changed? Is it just, unfortunately, that the statistics have got a bit scarier and here we are, or is there, are there other things afoot that suddenly now we're hopefully engaging with it a bit more as a world? Yeah, I think it's a mixture of things. I, I do think partly it's, it's because it's gone up the agenda in the wider culture and the sad reality is that that we do follow culture um often in our churches that might be controversial but we do i don't think we can deny that and that's probably natural we are we're not just living in our churches we are people in our culture in our society so so it does have an impact on us in that way so it, it's gone up the agenda in our culture and therefore we can't ignore it so much but i also think but there's just there has been over the decades a gradual building up and as more people have been coming to understand the 
that wider creation care is part of the gospel. It's part of the good news of Jesus. So the message has been going out. I, I think it's partly down to the hard work that me and a good number of others, I'm not on my own at all, have been doing, spending time in theological colleges, in um, clergy training colleges, leadership colleges, and then those, those people then take on churches. So it just begins to spread and to roll out. And I think then Eco Church caught hold of a desire that was there, but people and churches didn't didn't really know how to respond and eco church made it quite simple so then all of a sudden it was like there were seeds waiting and eco church was kind of the rain and and then it all sprang up so there's no doubt that there's there's movement but obviously still a long way yet to go indeed well going back to the book then we've got a couple of chapters in here uh children change churches uh which i think in a way sums up one of the major things to do with this book, which is actually that children, children and the younger generation can be such agents for changing all of this. It's mm. stuff that they can do in their own lives. And I think there's loads and loads of things in it. 52 ways to look after God's world is the subtitle at the top. Loads of things. And especially we even planned the release for before the summer holidays. Didn't we? Thinking people can do this stuff at home. Uh, but there's also stuff in here about children engaging their churches and their schools and influencing others in their lives to hopefully make a good difference in them. Yeah, and it's one of the exciting things for me that the children can be leaders. So the book has lots of tips about different things that you can do around the home. But as you say, it's also got a couple of chapters and it's woven into other chapters as well about um, tips for children to go to their church leaders or to their children's leader and say, you know, why don't we do this? Could we uh, make sure that our prayers are praying for the wider natural world or how about a service where we have a look at it and, and also for schools as well so there's lots of ideas in there to help our children not just make changes in their own lives but also to stand up and to be advocates and to be leaders more widely yeah well for those who are watching on the YouTubes um you know, I'll hold up to the screen. You can see a rough idea. You know, there are nice little pages. We've got some cartoon characters helping the children through the books, some journaling bits as well. Have you got any favourites? Sort of, uh, I mean, it's difficult to pick out favourites, isn't it? I don't know if you should ever have favourites. <laughs> it really is difficult. <laughs> you know, we've been asked that a few times, and I really can't pick up pick out a favourite. I just, I love, I love them all, and I love how they've been set out. And the illustrator, we ought to give a good shout out to Faye Austin, who's done a brilliant job with the book. I, I, I mean, it covers so many important issues. So I've just randomly opened up the book and it's come to tip number 20 called Cotton On, which is about our clothes and thinking about where our clothes or what our clothes are made from and how to source our clothes in a better way. And then this one is stargazing, which is simply about, it's not really a tip for something to do. It's just about getting outside when it's dark looking up if the, if the if it's a cloudless night and seeing what stars you can see and as you know we wanted to put things in the book that weren't just around practical things but were about helping our children and families to fall in love with the world that's around them to get out and look at the sky to look at the grass and see what insects are there and, and just to fall in love what is with what's around us Absolutely. I think and it, hopefully, yeah, it's rather just a, a checklist of, you know, we can do this, can do that. Uh, but a whole new way of looking at the world uh, is, you know, the one that you held up a minute ago was as well, number 10, welcome, which was I think was a lovely one. Just that idea of about looking out for children at school who are from different cultures and backgrounds and uh, and schools all the time are taking in new people from new countries who need to be welcomed. And the world with next to Zoom and things that we're now talking on here is feels like it's shrinking to a point. Yeah. Uh, and hopefully things like this can help us realize yeah. and it's good for picking that one out because i think that illustrates that the book and the tips aren't only around what we might call environmental things they do also encourage us to be thinking about other people and particularly people living in poverty so there's one one tip in here around twinning your toilet and that is a, a great way by which we can think around 
how amazing it is that we have wonderful toilets and the fact that a lot of people around the world don't have that but we can give a little bit of money and we can twin our toilet and that will help someone in a very different situation to have a better toilet so you know there's tips that are about people as as well as being about planet and we've also got some some real life planet protectors as well haven't we uh, have. yes yeah, so people who are children actual real real life children who are making a difference and uh, and i think that was a really nice thing to as well to have to show this isn't just us as as, as adults going hey here's some ideas kids but actually children who are really showing us what they can be doing yeah and doing some amazing things you know to sister uh, sister sister and brother who pushed Portsmouth Council to be plastic free and you know, it's some some really quite inspiring little young little is the wrong word some really quite inspiring children in there and the stories of what they're doing yeah well I think um, there's little more to say other than people should get this book obviously and uh, it's um, and, and I think you know there, there is a I know there people publishers often say hey you can buy in bulk and uh and you know it's cheaper that way but this is i think one book that actually with youth groups and church groups and schools and things that it can make a real difference i think and i'm excited to to think that even though we're only a week in to the book being out there but um already you're just seeing enough people picking up and and talking about it and the more people talk about it online so if you've got a copy talk about it online share it review it all that sort of stuff because it helps others get it and those kind of seeds then get spreaded. It's get spreaded. That was a terrible way of ending that. Otherwise, I think pretty good sentence. Never mind. <laughs> but also, I think you mentioned at the beginning that it's nearly the school holidays. And I think, again, we're facing a slightly different school holiday, aren't we? We're not going to be doing so much traveling. We'll be having a lot of holidays from home. And this will give a whole load of ideas for different things that our families can be doing. There you go. The book is Planet Protectors, uh, or especially audio people. If you're listening on the podcast, I've been incredibly visual on this one. And just <laughs> oh, look, Doesn't it look really good? Oh, you can't see it. No, it's called Planet Protectors. It's published by SPCK. We'll put a link in the show notes and that sort of thing. Um, and, th and thanks for getting me on board with this, because this was a great thing to be doing last year in, in lockdown. Oh, well, it's, yeah, it's been a pleasure to work with you. I've very much enjoyed it. Fantastic. Well, excited to see where it goes from here. And indeed, and what's next for you then? If you must be moving on to other things then, and not moving on to other things, this is on its way, but the writing is done of this now. So yeah. uh, what does the future hold then, apart from obviously book two and the spin-off film and the TV series, <laughs> waiting to hear about? Yeah, well, not another book yet. <laughs> um, uh, I'm Well, so my work at Tear Fund takes up most of my time. I work with an absolutely brilliant team of people in all sorts of areas but our one of the big focuses for this year is the the cop the parrot sorry one of our big focuses for this year is the UN climate change talks that are happening in Glasgow at the end of the year so we're doing a lot to engage with those and to help churches engage so lots of resources that people can find online at the, on the Tear Fund website to help your church engage with the climate crisis and to, to speak up and to push our government to put in place meaningful actions uh, leading up to those talks at the end of the year. Great, well, I'll put some links to those as well in the, in the uh, uh, as well. And we'll let you get back to work then because you've got plenty to do. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, so thanks thank again. you. Thank you again for having us on board with this. Planet Protectors, get your copy now. And thank you, Ruth Valerio.